From strictly a scientific point of view, perhaps one of the biggest disappointments in the promulgation of ISO 17025 is in Section 5.8. Section 5.8 concerns the proper handling of specimens, which in our application is the C's evidence. In only a few words, it states generalities of how the evidence is to be handled and how the items are to be tested. There's very little guidance and requirements as to this in ISO 17025 in the document itself. There only needs to be a procedure in place per ISO 17025. One of the better improvements of ASCLAD Lab in its interpretation is its rightfully taken position that this is a crucial part of any crime laboratory analysis and therefore dedicates an additional two and a half pages of requirements in its international program. In section 5.9, we find that there must be a procedure as to the assurance of the quality of the reported results. While not directly offering or even suggesting such a method, one possible process and methodology that could be used is properly called control charting. Control charting is a graphical and empirical statistical tool used to detect excessive process variability and to try and identify specific assignable causes that can be corrected. It serves to determine whether a process is in a state of statistical control. That is, the extent of variation of the output of the process does not exceed that which is expected based on the natural statistical variability of the process itself. Control charting is a great way to identify the source of statistical outliers where a machine can get pulled, an environment checked, or an inappropriate operator stopped or retrained. In section 5.10.1, we can find language that has a great possibility for abuse. Per section 5.10.1, it reads as follows. The results of each test calibration or each calibration or series of tests or calibrations carried out by the laboratory shall be reported accurately, clearly, unambiguously, and objectively, and in accordance with any specific instructions in the test or the calibration methods. The results shall be reported usually in a test report or calibration certificate and sh shall include all the information requested by the customer and necessary for the interpretation of the test or calibration results and all information required by the method used. The simple fact that the eventual test report that is issued to the customer must be one that is unambiguous connotes to, the, to me that 5.4.6 and 5.10.3.1c requires the reporting of uncertainty measurement in every case. ASCLAD Lab does not think so unless certain criteria are met. To present any measurement as an absolute without acknowledging uncertainty measurement does precisely that. It makes the reporting totally ambiguous. The counter-argument that is offered by ASCLAD Lab to my position and other laboratory managers support them is that the opposite of that. If uncertainty reporting were placed into every report whenever a measure is made, it would confuse the trier of fact. As such, they argue that a restriction on the raw data is warranted unless it is around a critical measure and that the unnecessary reporting of uncertainty measurement would invite ambiguity in the overall result. In essence, ASCLAD Lab instead wants to be the judge of the facts, which is, of course, impermissible as that role is specifically reserved to the trier of facts. Information is required. Regardless of ASCLAD Lab's interpretation of this section, there is hope that we can find in section 5.10.1 and section 5.10.4. We find language that states clearly that it is a requirement that any information not listed on the test report shall be readily available in the laboratory and therefore, therefore should be readily accessible to all of us upon request. It's a shame that ASCLAD Lab doesn't require the reporting of all measurement uncertainty. To do otherwise impermissibly, impermissibly invades the province of the judge or the jury as the trier of facts and substitutes their own editing into the scientific process. And that's just wrong.